industry rises, hundreds of thousands of new jobs created. The second five-year plan of industrialization has started in Kazakhstan. Terrorist threat remains. French authorities are strengthening security measures as citizens hold mass rallies and protests against terrorism. Kazakhs say no to guns. The government buys out registered traumatic weapons from citizens. New requirements for drivers and passengers have been introduced. Amendments in the traffic rules have caused heated debates in society. How to unite people maintaining different ethnic backgrounds of more than 100 nations. Kazakhstan shares its unique experience. Good evening, I'm Rahim Shakbaev and this is Kazakhstan Weekly, where we summarize the major local and international news of the past week. Our tonight's guest is a known public figure, Radio Akhmetov. Mr. Akhmetov, I'm glad to see you in our studio. Year 2015 is an important year for Kazakhstan in terms of economic and industrial development. First half-year plan of industrialization is over. The second phase of the state program of accelerated industrial and innovative development has started. About 300 enterprises worth 6.6 .6 billion tenge will be launched in Kazakhstan. According to experts, it will allow to create tens of thousands of new jobs. In the next five years, the emphasis will be made on the development of priority sectors. They are metallurgy, oil refining, food and chemical industry, construction materials, as well as automotive industry, production of rail and agricultural machinery, electrical equipment, mining, oil and gas production equipment. Let's watch the next story before we start talking about the new challenges of the country. 770 businesses worth about 3 trillion tenge were launched under the first five-year plan of Accelerated Industrial and Innovative Development Program. 150,000 jobs were created. These results prove that the state program is the core program for the Kazakh economy. And although the implementation of the state program has been criticized for idle production, the facts are obvious. The majority of enterprises launched under this program are actually operating now. In the field of car industry, the production of railway cars has increased tenfold. The automotive industry has increased the production of passenger cars by 12 times. Currently, almost 80% of building materials are produced in Kazakhstan. All the mistakes made earlier will be taken into account in the second five-year plan. Experts point out that the first five-year plan has taught three good lessons. The first and most important one is the blurred industry focus. From now on, the emphasis will be made on the manufacturing industry with the metallurgy, chemical, petrochemical, construction industry and the food industry in priority. The next lesson was insufficient funding of the program. Less than half of the planned budget was allocated for the projects. However, according to experts, even in this case, the result of the first five-year plan was not all too bad. Finally, the third lesson learned was the lack of coordination between agencies and development institutions. This problem will be addressed through the establishment of a special commission of industrial development under the Prime Minister of the Republic. A number of large enterprises which will significantly change the image of the manufacturing industry will be launched during the second five-year plan. If we are talking about engineering, it is a full-cycle car plant in Uskaminogorsk and the petrochemical sector. There will be a gas and chemical complex in Atrao in collaboration with LG Chem. In agricultural chemistry, a factory for the production of mineral fertilizers will be created in Jambul region. In metallurgy, Aktogai mining and a processing plant in the East Kazakhstan region. So, Mr. Akhmetov, what industrialization program's results you would say are the most optimistic? I would like to stress um, a few uh, items. As you have just mentioned, uh, the first um, five uh, plan of uh, uh, innovative industrial program uh, is over. And uh, beginning with uh, the 1st January of uh, 2015, uh, the second five-year plan uh, has already started. Of course, uh, the first five-year plan created uh, a lot of jobs. And uh, Kazakhstan launched uh, about uh, 700 uh, enterprises. And uh, of course, there were some also mistakes. And uh, because uh, there were a lot of uh, discrepancies, and uh, from these lessons, Kazakhstan learned a lot. And the uh, second um, five year plan will be much uh, effective and efficient because all those mistakes will be uh, taken into consideration. And uh, you, as you have just uh, prioritized uh, the, uh, uh, the next five-year plan, 
uh, manufacturing sector will be in focus and uh, equipments um, uh, for uh, refinery sector, for uh, agriculture and machinery sector and uh, very many other sectors uh, will be developed. And uh, from this point of view, I should underline that Kazakhstan has already diversified its economy. And uh, from, now, from now on, Kazakhstan will never suffer from Dutch disease, uh, disease as we have mentioned earlier. And uh, from this point of view, uh, the next five-year plan uh, will launch about 300 uh, enterprises with 6.6 uh, uh, billion uh, tenge. And of course, uh, our um, uh, Kazakhstan's image in manufacturing sector will be uh, very um, reliable. And uh, of course, uh, we should also take into consideration now that uh, the world economy is again in crisis and the international situation is also very serious and um, uh, we, are, we are facing for example uh, economic sanctions of uh, western countries uh, to Russia and Kazakhstan goes into the Eurasian Economic Union mm -hmm. and from this point of view uh, those sanctions will have, uh, uh, of course, some uh, effect uh, to Kazakhstan too. Mm -hmm. And that's why uh, our country, uh, our government and our president uh, have taken uh, real measures mm -hmm. uh, to uh, not to collapse the economy and to develop uh, uh, our diversified sectors, uh, priori priority sectors of our economy. And uh, from now on, uh, manufacturing sector will grow and uh, its uh, share will be bigger than the, uh, for example, uh, uh, oil and gas sector or uh, metal. Mm. Because uh, oil and gas and metal uh, were the main uh, points of our uh, export. And from now on, manufacturing sec uh, sector will prevail. And uh, this is a good step. This is what uh, I wanted to tell you about this. January the 7th in France was married by the bloodiest terrorist attack in the country in the past half a century. Two militants armed with AK-47 assault rifles broke into the building of the satirical magazine Charlie Hebdo and shot 12 people dead. And just a week after the incident, the scandalous magazine released yet another drawing of the Prophet Muhammad on its cover. All is forgiven, says the front page headline of the caricature depicting Muhammad in tears holding a Je suis Charlie banner. The 5 million copy issue was completely sold out, in contrast to its typical sales in France of only 60,000. The main Muslim associations in France have already expressed their opinion. They call the faithful Muslims to remain calm and avoid emotional reactions to the release of the new edition. The attackers on the Charlie Hebdo editorial office were two brothers, Said and Sheriff Kouashi. Both are French of Algerian background and veterans of the Syrian war in the past. The gunman asked locals on the street about the location of the editorial office and shot one of the passers-by. Later, they forced one of the workers to open the door, broke in and started the shooting. The gendarmerie of Paris was shocked by cruelty and professionalism of the criminals. During the retreat, gunmen shot dead a police officer. The search for the terrorist went on for several days. On January 8, people were shot dead in a shooting spree on the outskirts of Paris yet again. An unidentified man opened fire from his automatic weapon at a police officer and an employee of the road service and then fled the scene. On January 9, the French police managed to corner Said and Sharif Kouashi, the Charlie Hebdo attackers in a building of a printing office in the city of damartin en gaulle near Paris. On the same day, the Frenchman Amadi Koulibaly has taken about two dozen people hostages in a kosher supermarket. The attacker demanded release of the pinned Kouashi brothers at the printing office in Damartin on Goal, where the two were surrounded by the police at the time. The same evening, the police initiated an operation to eliminate the three terrorists. As a result, four hostages and three attackers were killed. According to the statements made by police, as many as six more suspects may be at large. The French Prime Minister Manuel Valls said the danger of new terrorist attacks still remains. According to Europol director Rob Wainwright, the terrorist Kouashi and Koulibaly were trained in terrorist groups. From three to 5,000 citizens of EU countries are taking part in combat operations in the Middle East in the ranks of Islamist groups. 
It's mostly the young people who are the potential terrorist threat. Europol has already found the names of two and a half thousand Islamist recruits. World leaders condemned the actions of extremists in France. German Chancellor Angela Merkel called the terrorist attack an attack on the freedom of speech and the mass media. Russian President Vladimir Putin also has strongly condemned the attack in Paris. He called the shooting a cynical crime. More than three million people marched in the memory of the victims of terrorist attacks in France. The largest one took place in Paris with more than a half a million people. According to the police, it was the biggest campaign ever on the streets in the French capital. Leaders and senior officials from nearly 50 states headed the front rows at the beginning of the major march. The purpose of the campaign was to show unity in the face of the terrorist threats. Similar marches of solidarity for the victims of the terrorist attacks of recent days were held in many French cities, as well as throughout Europe, in Berlin, Vienna, Brussels and London, and other cities around the world. The danger of terrorist attacks in France remains. We should not reduce the level of alertness. With a heavy heart, through you, members of parliament, I want to convey to the citizens of France that terrorism exists not just somewhere, but here in our country. Recent attacks are clear evidence to this. Uh, Mr. Ahmedov, the recent events, tragic events, have caused criticism towards the work of French security forces. In particular, the Prime Minister of France called the work ineffective. Do you agree with this estimate? Yes, absolutely, I agree, because uh, the security um, of, uh, for example, forces of France uh, has shown its weakness, because uh, those guys were, uh, they were in jail before um, creating these, uh, this kind of situation in the country. By the way, they are uh, French uh, citizens, and uh, they participated in Syrian war and elsewhere, and uh, they got trained. And the uh, security uh, of France, for example, uh, should have followed, uh, uh, they, they should have controlled them, but they missed this control. And uh, from this point of view, of course, uh, uh, France uh, should be very cautious because these kind of things might be repeated. Uh, because uh, more, uh, about three, uh, 300 uh, uh, French citizens, uh, for example, uh, are participating in the uh, in Syria and uh, elsewhere. And besides that, uh, I would say um, uh, more than 50 uh, heads of uh, states participated in the rallies uh, which took place in Paris. And um, uh, every, every country condemned uh, all over the world. Millions of people condemned uh, this uh, terrorist attack. But on the other hand, I would like to underline that uh, uh, it's my impression that um, uh, these um, uh, actions, for example, are very, very strong, but they are fighting against the consequences of terrorism. Mm -hmm. But to my mind, uh, we should, al we should uh, also uh, fight not only with the um, uh, uh, consequences, but the real sources of terrorism. Uh, what I am going to say is, for example, of course, we respect human rights and speech pre uh, freedom of speech, but there is very delicate uh, border between freedom of speech and uh, religious feelings of people. Sometimes religious feelings are neglected. If you remember a few years before, for example, these kind of rallies uh, were held all over the world in Muslim countries. Do you remember when Quran was burnt and? Uh, uh, cartoons were made uh, uh, related to Muhammad, Prophet Muhammad. And uh, this magazine has never stopped, uh, for example, publishing these kind of cartoons. And uh, what I'm going to say is religious feelings should be respected. Of course, together with the freedom of speech. When freedom of speech, for example, trespasses the feelings, religious feelings, these kind of uh, results we have. And uh, that's why, first of all, we should eliminate the sources of uh, terrorism, fundamentalism, but and- Such uh, kind of response is uh, uh, absolutely yeah. inappropriate. Otherwise, otherwise it's inappropriate. Mm -hmm. And uh, from the mass media, I read, uh, for example, uh, some of uh, the mm, German, for example, uh, parliamentarians criticized uh, the way how Al-Qaeda Al Al -Qaeda was created and Hamas was created. And uh, they severely criticized uh, these kind of things. 
And uh, of course, uh, I, I agree uh, with them. Mm -hmm. First of all, the humankind, the world should eliminate the real reasons and sources of terrorism. Let's talk a little bit about the effectiveness of the anti-terrorist programs. Uh, we know that uh, there are lots of uh, different funds in the world uh, with huge amounts of money spent of course, against a the lot terrorism. Of, a lot of money is spent on uh, uh, fighting against uh, terrorism. But I would say up till now, uh, those money, for example, uh, that uh, money was, was spent just uh, without any efficiency, you see? The more money has been put, but the result is very poor. Mm -hmm. That's why again and again, uh, the uh, humankind and the world should uh, look straight into the, uh, into the face of terrorism. Where is the reason? Where is the reason? The reason is, for example, to stop humiliating religious feelings. Mm -hmm. That's the main reason. If uh, uh, humiliating uh, is eliminated, terrorism will come to an end. If the humiliation of religious feelings continue, terrorism will go on. This is real fact. Because if we compare all uh, these actions, uh, we see very clearly. And uh, uh, scholars and the parliamentarians of different countries understand. And uh, that's why uh, all the countries should, should be very cautious and citizens should, be, uh, should respect uh, the religious feelings, not only freedom of speech. Again, again, I underlined, there is a very delicate border between religious feelings and uh, freedom of speech. Mm -hmm. uh, this is all what I want to say. The campaign to buy out registered traumatic weapons from the population started at the beginning of 2015. In return for returned weapons, the owners will be given monetary compensation. The weapons can be returned at any police station. About 2 billion tinge was allocated for these purposes from the budget. According to the Armour Association of Kazakhstan, if traumatic weapon is in excellent condition, the state must compensate most of its value. A campaign to buy out traumatic weapons will be ongoing throughout the year, and from January 1, 2016, all the weapons that were not turned in will be illegal. Then everyone will have to turn in their weapons, even if the validity period of the permit is not expired. Owners of weapons who don't turn in their assets within the set time frames will be prosecuted. According to the law enforcement officials, the population reacted positively to the newly introduced reform and takes an active part in the campaign. For example, the authorities of Kostanai already got rid of about a tenth of all registered weapons. For each legally purchased gas and traumatic gun, police will pay from 25 to 219,000 tenge. The amount will be paid after examination of the weapons. Police say they are ready to accept unregistered smoothbore and guns with rifling, but without monetary compensation. Some believe that disarmament is not always the correct measure for reducing crime. For example, if we take the experience of European countries. So, in the Baltic states, combat pistols are allowed, and as a result, crime has fallen by half. At the same time, after the prohibition of the firearms in the UK, the percentage of its use by criminals increased by 40% in five years. Today, according to Kazakhstan's Ministry of Internal Affairs, more than 40,000 citizens own traumatic weapons. Time will tell how many of them will part with their guns. 1,049 units of traumatic and gas traumatic weapons have been registered in the Kostanai region. To date, 115 units of traumatic weapons in the amount of 5 million tenge were returned by citizens. From January 1, 2016, people will bear criminal responsibility for possession of traumatic and gas traumatic weapons. So, Mr. Akhmetov, do you think uh, that the ban of the traumatic weapon will increase the security level in Kazakhstan? Yes. If we ban not only traumatic uh, guns, but all kind of guns, uh, this will uh, bring us uh, to, for example, safety and security. Why I am saying so? Because uh, we should also pay attention to the situation elsewhere, for example, in the United States, for example, uh, easy availability of rifles, guns, um, just trigger uh, any kind of crime any kind of crime. For example, um, uh, President Obama tried to, to for example, uh, to cut down, uh, for example, uh, 
the trade uh, with guns, but uh, he didn't succeed, I think. But uh, I would like to also pay attention to uh, the view, opinion of Lee Kuan Yew, uh, who uh, was during 31 uh, years uh, the Prime Minister of Singapore and uh, who is considered to be the best friend of the United States because Singapore became a very developed country due to the fact that it uh, has very strong ties with the uh, United States. Uh, it brings, for example, technologies, innovations, and talented people from all over the world. But in spite of that fact, Lee Kuan Yew under, uh, underlines that you know, he doesn't share the for example, uh, the so-called values, or American values, for example, drugs, narcotics, and uh, guns, and all kind of uh, crimes related with guns. That's why uh, I think uh, Kazakhstan uh, uh, law, uh, Kazakhstan is doing a very, uh, getting, uh, doing a very good step. We should get rid of any kind of uh, guns. Uh, of course, uh, for hunting and something, uh, uh, some other things may be retained. But traumatic guns should be returned uh, to the state mm -hmm. from the private ownership. Because uh, the more guns, the more crimes. But we have another opinion that uh, the law-abiding citizens should have rights to protect themselves with the arms, in, uh, with weapons in arms, uh, even with traumatic arms. I would say, uh, for example, in Kazakhstan, Kazakhstan is a very peaceful country. Very, uh, uh, if you, for example, uh, investigate the crime area, uh, very few crimes uh, related to guns, because uh, guns are not, uh, for example, um, uh, are not available very easily, as like in the United States. And, uh, of course, uh, traumatic guns were allowed uh, to buy, uh, by citizens, but now taking into consideration the um, uh, experience of different countries, including the United States, uh, Kazakhstan, uh, I think, uh, is on the right track. We should eliminate all the guns. Mm -hmm. The less guns, the less, the lesser crimes. That's the main point. Kazakhstan has witnessed an event that caused perhaps even more resonance than the news of the fall in oil prices or a change of the exchange rate in the neighboring Russia. The new traffic rules were enforced. This includes raising fines for certain types of violations and the arrest of up to 90 days. Every year, thousands of citizens are involved in traffic accidents. According to the official statistics, 2,126 people, including 206 children, were killed on the roads over 10 months. The last year, more than 21,000 people, including almost 4,000 children, received injuries or became disabled. A new law on road traffic was adopted in Kazakhstan in 2014. It was enforced on October 20. And on January 7, 2015, new traffic rules, approved by the government as of November 13, 2014, were enacted. This time amendments were more specific. Only responsibility for violations that caused death or injuries on the road was tightened, in particular the change of the speed limit. The speed limit, with the exception of highway and roads with a dividing line is now 100 km per hour. It used to be 110 km per hour. Fines for speeding were also increased. According to the new regulations, crossing the dividing line will result in a one-year suspension of driver's license. Before, a similar violation implied a minor penalty. In addition, term of driver's license, revocation of driving under the influence of alcohol has been increased. Another innovation is the abolition of the power of attorney for motor vehicles. But now, the name of everyone who gets the car for temporary use shall be included in the insurance policy. The Kazakh drivers now will have to turn running lights on during the daylight hours. Previously, they were used during daylight hours only on highways. Drivers were pleased to hear the news that the initiative of police officers to introduce a ban on roadside stopping or parking except in special places designated by signs parking or parking is allowed will not be accepted. But the transportation of passengers under 12 years old without a child safety seats or a special safety device can be costly for drivers. However, lawmakers were thoughtful enough of the violence a new code of administrative offenses provides for a 50% reduction in the amount of penalty in case the fine is paid within the first seven days from the day violation was fixed. 
только за 7 дней января. Only over 7 days of January, six children died and 17 were injured. Major car accidents occurred in Almaty region on January 1st. One underage killed, two injured. On the same day, a car flipped also in Almaty region. As a result, one child was killed. These are the facts. The victims are children. People must not forget that any of our children tomorrow may be in this situation. So, Mr. Akhmetov, what do you think about the innovations in traffic regulations of Kazakhstan? Uh, some of the innovations uh, of uh, uh, traffic regulation, uh, regulations, for example, they are uh, par of paramount importance, of course. Uh, at the end of the day, for example, these kind of laws uh, are adopted for the safety, uh, safety of citizens, uh, drivers. And uh, on the other hand, uh, these uh, last amendments are very tough. And uh, it raised a lot of criticism uh, from the society. For example, uh, do you remember, remember, for example, earlier, for example, we introduced a very tough uh, regulation. Cars cannot be parked along the streets. Mm -hmm. And uh, where they should be parked, if they cannot be parked anywhere. Absolutely. 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 And that's why it uh, raised a lot of disputes and uh, discussions and uh, criticism from uh, society. And I think now it is being eliminated. Yes? And uh, this new uh, regulations yes, in some parts uh, I uh, support. But for example, uh, these uh, safety uh, chairs, not everybody, uh, not everybody uh, has uh, bought, for example, these safety chairs. Because of this regulation, for example, the price has launched, has been launched to the skies. And it again um, uh, brought criticism from uh, society. Uh, that's why sometimes when we adopt uh, laws uh, which touches the interests of the society, we should be very cautious. It should be very cal well calculated. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, the interest of the public, the interest of the people should be on the first place. Year 2015 has been declared a year of Assembly of People of Kazakhstan. The organization was unique at the time of its establishment in 1995. It had no analogues in the Soviet era or in the contemporary world practice. Today the Assembly of People of Kazakhstan is an integral part of the national policy. The assembly is successfully engaged in strengthening inter-ethnic harmony and ensuring strict observance of the rights and freedoms of citizens regardless of their ethnicity. People of over 130 nationalities live in peace and harmony in Kazakhstan. This fact underscores the country's sustainable model of inter-ethnic tolerance. Kazakh scholars talked about the achievements of the assembly in inter-ethnic and inter-religious harmony in Sweden. The Uppsala University hosted an international conference on January 7-9. Delegations from the world's leading universities shared their experiences in building the inter-ethnic cooperation on the domestic and international levels. Kazakhstan was represented by a group of professors and researchers of the Academy of Public Administration under the President of Kazakhstan. Taking the floor, members of the delegation emphasized that Kazakhstan's correct public policy provides an opportunity for representatives of all diasporas to cherish their customs, traditions, culture and language. The assembly's uh, achievements are, first of all, um, first of all, no any uh, inter-ethnic conflict during the 20 years to develop ethnic uh, values, traditions, and mentality of each ethnic uh, group. Uh, the state policy may make makes a lot. Uh, for example, each of them have the, uh, have their has their. Um, schools, books in native languages, uh, they have the equal rights. Everybody, Kazakhs, Russians, Ukrainians, and every uh, each, uh, and, and each uh, ethnic um, group. The Assembly of People of Kazakhstan as a structure appeals to all international institutions. The UN, OSCE, Council of Europe and all Asian European associations and those on the post-Soviet territory are carefully evaluating our experience of cohabitation of different ethnic groups and religious entities. So, uh, Mr. Akhmetov, uh, could you please explain the role of uh, the People's Assembly of Kazakhstan? The role of People's Assembly of Kazakhstan is very great, I would say. Uh, 
This assembly has been, uh, has been launched long before, as you remember, 20 years back. And the 2015 uh, is considered to be the, law, uh, the year of uh, People's Assembly of Kazakhstan. Why so? Because this assembly, I would say, is the cornerstone of the internal and the external policy of our uh, state of Kazakhstan. Because Kazakhstan is a very multi-ethnic uh, country. And uh, in Kazakhstan, uh, assembly uh, has the status, constitutional status. And nobody is discriminated according to our constitution. Every, everybody has the same right, equal right. Uh, no discrimination uh, uh, exists, for example, in Kazakhstan. That's why uh, uh, the People's Assembly of Kazakhstan uh, is a good example to follow by other countries. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, uh, do you remember uh, just uh, in the fall, for example, a center uh, was uh, launched in uh, London related to our assembly. Mm -hmm. Now, um, I wouldn't say the whole world, but very many countries are investigating, studying, uh, and uh, getting, uh, for example, uh, uh, examples uh, from this assembly. Uh, the more uh, the state uh, is multi-ethnic, the better if any state uh, has this kind of assembly because it brings people together and uh, it brings to uh, cohesion, it brings to stability and uh, unity. Mm -hmm. And from this point of view, of course, the role of uh, People's Assembly of Kazakhstan is very high mm -hmm. and everybody acknowledges it. And uh, the members of the assembly, for example, uh, are also uh, parliamentarians. Nine of them come from this assembly. Uh, and uh, I think this year we'll celebrate uh, the 20th anniversary of the assembly. And uh, the role of the assembly will from day to day increase. Mm -hmm. And I think this is the right step. Absolutely. Regarding the latest tragic events Absolutely. in Ukraine, Absolutely. the role of such kind of institutes yes. of uh, yes. Ukraine is, is a very good example. Mm -hmm. And uh, assembly, assembly also uh, takes into consideration uh, uh, the law on language, for example. In Ukraine, for example, because of the language, because of the uh, religious attitude, for example, uh, civil war is going on and going on. And that's why Assembly of Kazakhstan plays a very, very uh, well calculated role in the life of every citizen of Kazakhstan. Mm -hmm. So, Mr. Akhmeda, thank you very much for your insightful comments. Hope to see you again next week. Thank, thank you very you. much. Finally, here is a brief preview of the events of the coming week. On Tuesday, January 20, Moscow will host the first meeting of the Eurasian Economic Commission Collegium. The annual World Economic Forum will be held in Davos, Switzerland, between January 20 first and 24. We will discuss this and other important events in our next program. Thank you for watching. Best of luck and goodbye.